What is up my birthday besties? Today is Sunday, March the 19th. I'm aboard the lovely Carnival Freedom, which just so happens to be the same exact boat that we are gonna get on in 47 days to celebrate our birthdays. So um, I'm here, I figured, might as well show you guys what you have to look forward to, hopefully get you a little excited and share some tips, things that might um, make your trip a little better and have you plan for what you wanna do while you're here. So let's start with the good stuff. Everybody loves a good meal, especially one that you don't have to cook on your own. So here's your dining options. If you've ever cruised before, you know that one of the highlights is your main dining in the evening. Now you're assigned that table. We uh, go for the six o'clock dining, if at all possible. Um, that's Henry doing the chicken dance in the background. He's gonna try and hook us up with the table together when we get on board. On to the Lido deck. Now this is the ninth deck. It starts on midship and goes all the way to the back of the ship. It starts off with a buffet. It's a huge breakfast in the morning where you can get your fresh eggs omelet station right here, which also turns into a Mongolian buffet area in the afternoon. You circle around, it's one big circle, and this is your sandwich shop, the deli. I loved the buffalo chicken sandwich. It was really, really good. And into the back, this is called the Freedom Restaurant. You'll see why here in just a second. Um, this is where um, your midnight buffet takes place. Your sweet stations is there. Upstairs on the 10th floor, once you get back to Freedom, is the barbecue place. So I highly recommend you try a little bit of everything. I loved the beef. It was phenomenal. Really good stuff. Go back downstairs to the sweets area. There's always a little of something there in the middle. This is the buffet that also has the fresh carving station in the back of the boat. Head around to the side. Bonsai Cafe is a sushi place. Now, a couple things to note with this one. There is a charge for your sushi, and there is nothing made to order. You either order off the menu or you don't eat there. Pretty simple. On to one of my favorites, the Seafood Shack in the back. This restaurant also has a charge to it. Cool thing, you used to have to order and stand in line and wait for 30 minutes. Now you can pre-order on the app. The Carnival app is awesome. I'll talk about it at the end of the video. I highly recommend the seafood platter and the um, clam chowder. Really good stuff. Across the way is the pizza place. It is open 24 hours a day um, during the duration of your cruise. I highly recommend that you try out the Quattro pizza which is the four cheese pizza. It was phenomenal. We had two slices every night before we went to bed. The blue iguana is back towards the mid of the ship. It is a great place for a breakfast burrito if you're into that kind of thing. There's every topping you could possibly imagine. There's no charge for any of this. Lunch, there's tacos, there's burritos. And right across the way is Guy's Burger. Also no charge for this. Highly recommend the pig patty. That is a phenomenal cheeseburger with a whole patty of bacon in addition to a regular patty. So really good stuff. It's not open very often though. It was only open primarily around sea days when the crowds were really, really busy. If you head on down to deck five, which is the promenade deck, midship, you're gonna find the coffee joint. There is a charge to everything on the menu here, but if you're in the mood, that's where it is. And also upstairs on the 10th floor, the Sun King Steakhouse is there. Now, there is a $38 per person charge for this meal. And although at the end of this video, I'm gonna say, guys, I really want us to go one night. I take it back. We didn't love it. It was not worth the $38. There were a few good appetizers. The pork belly you're looking at there. I did not like the soup, which was a bisque. Um, I did enjoy the bone marrow and the steak tartare, which is in the next little video picture here. I, it was delish. First time having bone marrow. Um, steaks were pretty typical. I think the ones we grill on my grill at home were better. The mac and cheese was pretty plain. You kind of get the picture. We tried all of the steaks, a little bit of all the desserts. The desserts were beautiful, but honestly, I think I enjoyed the ones in the main dining. So we can talk about if we're going to do this as we get closer to the cruise. So unlike in the main dining room where you can order whatever you want, as much as you want, you can't do that here. You get one entree and that's it. And there's no special request. 
So the ship itself is actually very common for any of the carnival ships. It's much better than the one that we originally planned to be on. So I don't mind that we got moved over to the Freedom at all. It's definitely an upgrade. So here's some of the hot spots aboard the ship as well as your cabin options. So back to midship, fifth floor, um, all your shopping is all in one little area. It's pretty typical. There's a candy shop to the left, um, a little place for souvenirs, and then all your jewelry, of course, anything you could want. Underneath that on the fourth floor is where all the photo galleries are for you to pick up your pictures. And on the basement area there, they do trivia and they have live entertainment. The fifth floor promenade continues with your casino, which is very typical. It also has some entertainment. It has another rum bar in the middle, which I thought was strange. I've never seen that before. An arcade. And then on the way to the back of the ship is where the disco is. This is called a 70s club. And when I was filming, they were doing an art auction. Kind of a classy bar behind that onto the piano bar. And then into my favorite area while we were there for entertainment was the Punchline Comedy Club. They had a really phenomenal uh, comic on board for us. I wanted to take a second to show you just how busy it gets on a sea day. Uh, back up on the Lido Deck 9 on the left-hand side there is a tequila bar. And on the right-hand side is a rum bar. They pretty much serve the same thing. And just to make you laugh, you know, if you like to people watch, Carnival is the ship for you for sure. Upstairs to the spa. What do I want to say about the spa? I mean, was it nice and was I on vacation? Yes. Was it worth the money I spent? Absolutely not. Um, I'm kind of spoiled though. It's true. Size matters. Well, so does heated massage tables and a place for your arms to lay. These are very small rooms. Uh, the therapist couldn't even get all the way around the table because of the size. It's just a little uncomfortable, but hey, you're on vacation. So it's up to you if you guys want to go. Um, I was thrilled to see that uh, this ship had both uh, the spa, um, sauna, and steam room open for vaccinated guests only. But at least it was an option and you can just go up there and use it if you want throughout the day. Here is a quick snapshot of what a balcony room is like. We had our couch laid out for Joshua, so we kept it that way because he would come pass out in the middle of the day. Um, balcony is nice. Of course, you get your towels every night, uh, different animals. Lots of space for your stuff, especially for the four days that we're going to be gone. And the bathroom is, again, very typical carnival bathroom setup. This is right across the hall. This is uh, the interior cabin. I know a couple of you have booked this setup as well. Plenty of space for four days to do what we need to do and also same bathroom setup. So it's pretty decent. So true story, I took it upon myself to dine at every single one of the dining options for you guys so I could recommend where you should go. Ideally, we'll have a table together. We'll have to make sure that we get all of our booking numbers together um, so we can sit together. I really, really loved our servers, so maybe we can get them again. I don't know if they're still on the boat. Um, I would love for us to do the steakhouse together one night, so we'll have to plan all of that. A couple things I wanted to tell you about. One, mask, nowhere really on the ship. So if you're super COVID-y, scary person, you probably don't want to come on this boat because they really don't require mask at all. Even in the venues that were really full, masks were not required. So uh, the only times they asked us to put them on is when we were getting on and off the ship and then when you were in the cruise terminal. Um, so that's one thing. Two, we have to decide if we want to rent a boat when we get to Nassau. Um, do we want to hit up Captain Danny, get on a private boat and have him drive us around, go see the turtles again maybe or something like that? Definitely want to stop at the fish fry and get some really good conch salad and a couple of other things. Do we want to do that or not? I recommend that we choose one day, um, not a sea day, but a different day to actually stay on the boat. We did this um, during the Half Moon K day because Half Moon is just a beach. So it's, it's a beach. So if you're not a big beach person, we're not. We stayed on the boat and it was amazing. We had the whole pool to ourselves, the bars were open. So I think we should talk about doing that. Um, so we'll kind of plan out how we wanna work our time while we're on board. A Couple of other things, medicine. <laughs> Make sure you bring Dramamine. I'm, I don't get sick, so I'm very fortunate, but um, we did have a family member that was very sick on this trip. It is rocky out here. I don't know if this boat has stabilizers or not. I assume it does. 
um, but bring it. We ended up spending quite a bit of time in Aruba just trying to find a pharmacy um, to get us through the end of the trip. So make sure you bring a miniature pharmacy with yourself and if you're not sure if you're gonna get sick or not, just buy the Dramamine and bring it with you just in case. The other thing that you must do, it is so super cool, is download Carnival Hub. Do it now, it's a cruise countdown for you until you get on the boat, and as soon as you get on the boat, you just check that you're on board, and the whole app changes. This is where you can order all your food in advance if you choose to. All of your menus, even for the main dining rooms, are already pre-listed, so gone are the days that you go and sit around a table, and you get handed a menu, and you sit there and read through the menu. You already know what you're gonna eat by the time you get into the dining room. So all of our nights dining in the main dining, we had appetizers within the first five minutes of us sitting down. Some people love it because it's quick. It gives you time to do other things on board. Some people miss the two hour dining experience. It's definitely not that anymore. Um, also on the app, once it switches over and you're on board, all the activities are there so you don't get those little paper activity things anymore under your door. Um, and you can pre-plan what you wanna do. You put a little heart by it that you wanna go to that and it moves it over to your personal planner, which also includes any reservations that you have. So Carnival has done a really, really good job with this app and um, it'll make your life so much easier. It'll also tell us what we're supposed to wear at dinner and it's, it's just really cool. So make sure you download the app, start your countdown now and 47 days, I'll see you on board. All right, bye guys, love y'all.